What's going on? What's going on? Family, we back. Shout out to the entire LDBC, your boy CJ Goodfellow. We working on Goodfellow Sports TV. And it seems to be, if everything is true, that Terrence Crawford is the real boogeyman of the 147-pound division. Okay? And um, I say that to say this. That, you know, it's, it's not really shocking. And the reason I say that is because Mayweather confirmed that PBC was in no rush to make Terrence Crawford versus Errol Spence. So, and Errol Spence, you know, hasn't called out Terrence Crawford, okay? He said he wouldn't have no problem fighting him, but he hasn't officially called him out. So, yeah, was it Salty Grapes by Mayweather? Yes. You know, it was Salty Grapes. But you can't be, you know, want all the smoke. You can't be the boogeyman. You can't be trashing Sean Porter and Keith Thurman when you throwing a rock and you living in the glass house. So, for one time... And one time I can remember recent nature, Bob Aram, and I heard this several times from several different people, several different people, Bob Aram really believes that Crawford and Lomachenko can whoop any and everybody. And was it a surprise that Mikey Garcia had rather went for uh, Errol Spence than Terrence Crawford? No, it's not a surprise. It's a stylistic thing, but, but don't seem to be ducking no smoke. But, say I want everybody with a title. Bob Aram said we can make the fight in less than three hours. Mayweather came out and said, you know what? We don't have no intentions on PBC on making that fight. And is Terrence Crawford or more decorated amateur than Errol Spence? Honest, obviously, no. No. Errol Spence made it to the Olympics. But does Bud Crawford have more boxing experience than Errol Spence? Professional and amateur, by far. Crawford, Errol Spence started boxing at, what, 15-16? Terrence Crawford start boxing, I think, at a younger age. He's been professional for about five more years longer than Errol Spence. So it is an experienced gap there. No matter what we think in the ring, what will happen, it ain't always what it's seen on the surface. If you dig deeper, you get past that superficial phase, you dig deeper, you start to find out that you know, guys, and the guys that we rooting for, the guys that we picking up, you know, they don't really want to smoke. They say they want to smoke and want this, but behind the scenes, it ain't always true. So, at this point on, I will no longer be going to bat for any fighter not named Deontay Wilder. Because I know for a fact that he wanted to fight Anthony Joshua. So, all these fighters out here that, you know, are like the Charlos and Spence and you know, you got guys of that nature. You got guys um, outside of that network like Jesse Hart, Gilberto Ramirez, your Callum Smiths, your ben well, Benavidez in that network. Um, you know, you got all these different fighters. You know what I'm saying? And if a fighter don't come up and officially call fighters out and speak up for herself, there should be no one on channel taking up for them. If they don't show the same aggressiveness, the same tenacity, the same drive is what Wilder is showing. I'm I'm just not gonna go to bat for these fighters no more. It's not gonna happen. And was it shady by Mayweather to do it? Yes. But it the thing the positive thing about it was not them not ready to make that fight when Bob Graham was ready to make the fight. It make business sense. Now if it's not from a, a physical standpoint between Crawford versus Earl Spence, it makes business sense. And the businesses that it makes in, I'm tired of talking about business, but you have to talk about it when you're talking about a whole equation. The business sense makes sense as why would we give up an IBF title to Bob Aram and then he got two titles and we only got two titles too. So we lose leverage. And from this point of fact as well, why would we make the Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence fight now when Earl Spence can get another title or three titles and he could demand a 70-30 split? If we bring in three or two titles to one to the table, three to one, two to one, we demand a larger split. So from the business standpoint, people are not going to look at it like that, but that's business. Or we can get more notoriety, we can get more more leverage or, or more money if Earl Spence fights Sean Porter, Keith Thurman, winner, or either or, or both, and get three belts, and it's a bigger fight overall, and we take home a bigger pot. But this just shows you when guys come up here and run down on guys 
and say, oh, Sean, you a punk or Keith, you a punk. And you don't always know what ha what's happening behind the scenes. He may be out here wanting to smoke, but his team, though, is for the better good that he don't take that fight right now. And it's also the part of feeling that people may think on PBC side and they his arrow handlers may think he's not ready for Bud Crawford yet. There is a five year professional fighter gap advantage. And also on top of that, there's an amateur advantage. Earl Spence was a late starter. But it's so hard to gauge these do these people in boxing. Bob Aram, I was lying yesterday. Today I'm telling the truth. He's been a notorious liar. But in this situation, he was telling the truth. He wanted to make Crawford Earl next. He knew he knows behind the scenes that they don't feel they don't feel that strongly about making that fight right now. Maybe the business or maybe the physical side of it. So if the boogeyman, Free Smoke Jr., okay, don't want don't want to fight a guy, and he's not ready for a guy, whatever the situation may be, business or don't want to fight him, you have no other choice but to call Bud Crawford the most feared man in the welterweight division. He's pound for pound, number one for a reason. And I don't miss no words. I don't have any allegiance to these fighters, but tell you the truth. And when I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong, but I was going off the track record of Bob Aaron. That he lies, you don't know when he's lying, you don't know when he's telling the truth. But Mayweather, you know, as he does, stepped on Earl Smith's toes, and you're not going to be bigger than him. It's not being big, bigger than PBC. It's not being bigger than Showtime. It's not about even being bigger than boxing. Anybody that's approaching superstar, real superstar status, Mayweather will, will crush you. He tried to crush Deontay Wilder. He can't physically crush Deontay Wilder in or outside the ring, but he tried to physically crush Deontay Wilder. He tried to squeeze his pay-per-view date, knock Wilder pay-per-view date out. He tried to. But Al Hamer said, dog, you can't do that. Oh, Wilder can fight on the undercard of my shit. Come on. But he physically tried to do that. So any any of these, any of these, these little inklings these fighters got, any secrets, any criminal activity swept under the rug, any drug tests swept under the rug, any chinks in their armor, any holes in their game, he's going to tell it all. He's going to leak it. Are you going to the zone? Oh, let's tell him how you felt that drug test we covered up. Let's tell him how you beat that girl and we covered it up. It sounds like it's some blackmail going on here. It sounds like, okay, and Earl hasn't came out and dispersed the rumors. Nobody in his team came out and said, oh, this not true. And we'll... And all you got to do, if he don't speak up for himself, we can't be the voice of these fighters no more. We can't speak up for them. All we can do is push them. Deontay Wilder speaking up, oh, we get behind them. Oh, you talking facts, we get behind you. We can't no longer insinuate or no longer uh, uh, jump to a conclusion to defend these fighters. If they don't speak for themselves, hey, I don't know. I don't know. And it's much, much, all that, that boogeyman is out the window. Most feared men, out the window. Comparing him to Paul Williams, that's out the window. He loses that moniker instantly. Because when it's smoke on the flow, you supposed to get all the smoke, right? Free smoke, Junior? Oh, no, that's gone. That That's gone. That's completely gone. Crawford is the boogeyman at the 147-pound division. You might not want to rank him number one welterweight. And I understand he got more things to do. But he is the boogeyman in the division. Because if the boogeyman don't want to fight him, a guy that started, I believe, at 130, what I understand, won the title of 35, 140, 147, you know, it is what it is. And Floyd Mayweather did step on his toes. You know? He did. And that was bold. That was bold. I thought PBC was supposed to be a team. And at some point, somebody got to come up and challenge him and smack him in his mouth. Their respect factor of being a legend Got to be thrown out the window. That respect factor got to be going out the window at some point. Somebody got to step up and keep a trill and, and tell him the real and tell Al, either you tell this, this clown to keep him moving and mind his own business or I'm gone. I'm walking. But y'all know what it is. Let me know what y'all think. Good fella Sports TV. We up in this thing. Shout out to the whole Lions Den box community. We working. We're going to continue to work. We're going to continue to hold it down. Um, we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. If you want to make a donation, the PayPal link is in the description. Also, want to give a special shout out to Southside Boxing Six Hundred One. 
the homie, um, had me on this platform today. I definitely appreciate it. Good conversation, smart brother. No, a lot of boxing, a lot of football, and um, we definitely gonna link up on some more streams. Shout out to the brother Junior the Truth, the mastermind behind the Smoke City Mobcast, Smoke City Mobcast, every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time when the LDBC meets to talk about the current state of boxing. So subscribe to the Smoke City Mobcast on YouTube and Junior the Truth. One word, we gone.